the phone when he pulls up and I have a little disaster going on and I'm like, okay, Lord. And then he pulls up and he's got a little disaster. You've got to go to Florida when you get off the set. I do. I've got to head to Florida. Yuck. Yeah. Yuck. Yeah. My time you know how hot it is, is going in on my car. Mm. Yep. Yeah. And, and then when I was getting ready to leave today to go on this trip last night, my truck broke down. So it's good. See, yeah. we don't drink and we don't smoke, and we depend on the Lord to get us through this. And Lord, you're going to be busy today. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's going to be busy. He's going to be all right. He is going to be. Uh, he's going to be very busy because a lot is going on. Not only with us. Everywhere I look, somebody says, "You won't believe what happened to me. You won't believe what I'm going through. You won't believe what I'm facing." And the cool thing is, we are all going to get through this. Oh yeah. We're going to get through yeah. it. You it's better. What's your thing. sermon on today? Miracles? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's actually going to be between the between the promise and the port. In other oh. words, between when God said we'd go to the other side and there, we will get to the other side, but there's some things right. that will take place in between. And so. if we thought that the world was going to end tomorrow, would we both go out and buy us a brand new black Cadillac? Oh, I would buy, yeah. To I'd drive buy one day. Things. That's right. <laughs> On credit. <laughs> That's, yeah, just leave it here. <laughs> leave it here. That's for sure. Uh, it is going to be a positive day. There mm -hmm. have been about three weeks ago. I think I set the tone for what's happening, and I didn't really mean to. I had a counselor on who, quite honestly, opened up a can of worms, but it was a good can of worms. Because all of a sudden, <clears throat> every day I'm getting these emails. You know, you don't know what's going on with me. You wouldn't believe what I'm facing. You don't know what happened to me when I was a child. I'd like to share this with somebody. I need to talk to a counselor every day. We are not alone. And no. I said, that is the weird, funny thing about this. Three weeks ago when I brought on this counselor, it was because I'd had lunch with a, a friend several times who told me, he said, if you knew my life story, well, we were talking about what I'm writing, and I read him parts of it, and he's like, wow. And I said, you know, but I made it. I made it. I've never been depressed. I've been, now let me tell you about this about me. I've been mad. I've been glad. I've been tired. I've been ill as a hornet. I have been um, very angry, but I've never gotten to the depressed level. And I have seen so many people now from teenagers to elderly folks contacting me who said, <clears throat> I have been depressed for 30 years. I've been depressed for two years. Um, I am depressed. And I said, it blows my mind. But three weeks ago when we brought the counselor on, I wasn't sure what your reactions were going to be. Mm -hmm. And evidently, there is a hurting world out there. Oh, yeah. There is yeah. a hurting world out yeah, there. Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people. I've been through some have you degrees been depressed? of, oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I have been, I'll admit that, yeah. There have been times that I've been very depressed when I look at my circumstances, you know, uh -huh. sometimes when I, when I was looking at my circumstances. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, you make it through it. I mean, it's just a step at a time, and you have to sometimes encourage yourself in the Lord, and sometimes you just you get encouragement from other people. But uh, we all go through. I mean, I I did. I went through some depression there for a while before I come back to the show and stuff uh -huh. like that for uh -huh. quite a I while. I was worried about you. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, but you know, um, here we are. You know. We are, and you have been back over a year. Yep. Now, the little break you took was probably good for everybody. You needed to do some healing. Mm -hmm. During that time, um, a lot of people helped you to heal. You couldn't have done it alone? Oh, no. No, no. nobody can do it alone. You went to counseling? I did. Sure <clears throat> okay. Did. And, sure and did. we want to talk about Thursday. I have a counselor, another counselor, who's going to be on. And then next Monday, Ann's going to be back. We're going to start doing some regular things with counseling because many people cannot get through it without it. Right. Many right. people never, never open up, and I think that is a big issue. Well, you got to open up and you got to be honest. Right. Yeah. Both things are you're wasting your time. Okay. If you don't. When you look at the honesty of mistakes you may have made and things that have happened to you, is it easier to talk to somebody or could you have sucked it up and dealt with it on your own? No, I mean, you, you can't, it's not. I don't think most people I mean, can. Let me say, it's not easy mm -hmm. to do this. I mm -hmm. mean, it's not an easy thing. It's the right thing, mm -hmm. but it's not easy. Um, you know, uh, to try to fool yourself and say, well, I can handle this, I can fix this. No, no, you can't. I mean, um, 
it's, it, each person is different and they have to deal with things differently and I understand that. But for me, I mean, it was best to go and do some counseling and enjoy knowing that you're not alone, um, knowing that there are others that have been in your situation. Um, Possibly in worse situations. Oh, yeah, po oh, yeah came several even yeah. worse situations. Yeah. But also being reminded that there is forgiveness and there mm -hmm. is there mm -hmm. is healing, there is uh, encouragement. Um, you know, I find a lot of people out in this world, you know, I remember in college we took psychology and we took several things and the greatest ability or the greatest um, attribute of a good counselor is that they're able to listen. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times, you, you, if you'll talk things out, you'll, you'll, you'll ha you actually give the solution to your problems mm -hmm. and you're talking, but you just need to hear somebody else agree with what you're saying a lot of times. You know, but they give great advice. You know, for a long time, I wouldn't go to a counselor because um, you know, I had counseled people and I had, uh, I thought, well, what are they going to tell me that I don't already know? And mm -hmm. I, not that I'm a know-it-all, but I've, you right. know, in that situation, I thought, uh, I know what they're going to say, so why, why go do this and stuff? But it really was a great blessing in my life that, um, that I went to this, uh, through this, and um, I'm not apprehensive about ever doing it again if I ever felt the need to maybe mm -hmm. go up and refresh some things and stuff. That doesn't bother me at all. Um, you know, it was a great, great thing for us. I mean, it really was. <clears throat> have you ever counseled, um, well, like the counselor I'm going to have on Thursday, she was a marriage counselor. She actually quit doing this and, and semi-retired because of health issues with herself. If you counsel people, did you take that home with you sometimes? And, and possibly do you see a counselor ending up with medical issues because they take home their work and they take home the problems and they do you think that happens quite often to counselors? Yeah, they're, they're trained to try to how to handle some of those things but yeah I think it's good for counselors to counsel mm -hmm. you know because they they just need to you know they you, stress I mean it's just you can't take on all that stress and never be able to relieve that stress so right. um, you know and there, again a, a counselor is not immune to the things and the pressures of this world and if all you do all day long is listen to listen people's to problems, problems. Oh, and never man. ever ever get that off you um, you know it's just it's it's a necessary thing for everybody that's what a lot of people think well a counselor they never have any problems or something like that well that's not true mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of them that have had problems simply because they have not learned to deal with their situation it, we're all in this thing together mm -hmm. and everybody has there's nothing new under the sun uh, you'll not meet anybody in this world that's perfect uh, that's not that their life was just perfect and uh, we might they may appear to be but you know everybody has faced different types of discouragements and problems in their life and it's good to talk about mm -hmm. them it's really good to get them off your chest and stuff lately <clears throat> I've talked to a lot of men who have a lot to deal with from things that happened when they were children mm -hmm. and um, our guest on Thursday is he's been married almost 62 years old they're actually going to be here we're going to sort of semi celebrate their anniversary while they're here his life started at 14 when he left home on a bicycle and rode 550 miles and never looked back and I'm looking now at how men deal with what I call tragedies of life. Mm -hmm. Because if you look back and you have all these horrible, horrible memories as a child, that's a tragedy. That's a tragedy. And yesterday, um, you know, it's funny, three weeks ago we started talking about abuse, neglect, um, child molestation. We've talked about everything. And then yesterday Oprah did something that I don't know that I could have gotten through. She talked to four child molesters and they gave their stories of why. And she did an excellent job of holding it together. I don't know that I could have held it together because quite often your emotions dictate your actions. And um, sometimes you, you think, well, I should have shot him, you know, I should have shot him, which is not a good reaction. But um, as she sat there talking to these child molesters who had molested children from five years old to 17 years old, she held it together, and uh, I was, I'm, I was blown away by that because I don't know that I have the emotional to do that. Yeah. Um, it's kind of well, scary, and I wonder how a counselor, if a counselor is counseling someone, and they say, "Oh well, I've been doing so and so and so and so to my grandchild for 30 years." How does that counselor handle that? How do they not want to just hit them with a baseball bat? So I well, wonder I how a counselor must be a very special I mean, person. I, I'm sure that they're not immune to those feelings, and. 
And of course, there's there's legal responsibilities that they have in a situation like well, that. Well, sometimes but, emotions yeah, do away with legal right. responsibilities right. too, which but, is tough. Um, but now, I watched a television show last night, a movie last night that was uh, based on the story of uh, the Amish children that were murdered, mm -hmm. and to see the forgiveness that was oh, extended. Yeah. Kelly McGinnis you know, played that part. I, I, I've been studying <clears throat> here lately more and more and more and more on the blessing of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. uh, it is it is something. What people don't realize is forgiveness is not condoning what somebody right. does. That that right. is so not what it is. To, you know, for you to forgive somebody that has hurt you in, in some terrible ways is not to say you agreed with what they did, that you expect them, you know, to get a, you know, well, just slap on the wrist and that's it. No, um, but true forgiveness, when you can learn to forgive people, you really, as one person said, you release a prisoner, that is yourself. You're, you're the one that's hurting mm -hmm. yourself when you right. can't forgive somebody. <clears throat> um, so, uh, can I ask you something as a dad? Mm -hmm. As a dad and as an educated minister and um, as someone who took psychology, if someone had raped and molested your five-year-old, tell me where dad kicks in and the smart preacher walks out the door. How do you handle that? Well, I think immediately dad kicks in. I mean, okay. I don't think it's, uh, you never stop being a father even though you're a minister. And so, um, uh, one one consolation we have in a situation like that is we know we have a heavenly father that mm -hmm. knows what it's like to mm -hmm. have a child abused mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. even though he was 33 years old and hung on a cross at Calvary could have changed it all that's right. what's a miracle about right. it he could have destroyed everybody and just started all over but he didn't because he loved us um, uh, I've told you I'm not perfect so mm -hmm. to give me that scenario mm -hmm. um, I sat there and watched that movie last night and thought these people um, reacted in a way that I probably would not have reacted. Uh, I think I think there are some of the feelings that we have that are definitely justified uh, to want justice in a situation like that. Definitely, that, that, that's, that is justified to want justice. Mm -hmm. um, to have the desire to take things into your own hands. Yeah, you have the desire to take things in your own hand. If you're a father, you're gonna to want to. Right. Um, <clears throat> you know, so uh, that's a question I'm not sure how to exactly answer because I've not been placed in that position, but to be presented me that scenario with my children. Um, I know what you feel about your daughters. Oh, and yeah. I know how wonderful your daughters are. I've always said it And this I way. could just imagine if, uh -huh. if someone, if, if Lindsay walked into you and said, Dad, guess what happened to me when I was five years old, six years old, seven years old, eight years old. Right. How today would Matt Dibler handle that? <laughs> See, wow, that, we are all yeah. human. Oh, yeah, We're I'm all human. human. Well, yeah. I've always, we I've always said it this way. I've always said it this way. And I'm trying to be cautious, but I, I'll say it this way. <laughs> and the gun is what gun. It, it would be better for the police to catch them. You know, right. it's the way, right. way you feel humanly. Right. My first reaction, I would hope, is stop, pray about this thing, that because what good is it going to do right. my child? What, well, how am I going to help my child more? Right. You know, sitting, sitting in a jail behind, cell yeah. or, you know, right. or being here to right. be a spiritual example and comfort and help them. And how am I going to protect them if I'm in that position? So, yeah. and it's never right to do wrong right. that a right thing might occur, uh, or what you think is right <coughs> that's that good it might advice. occur. Yeah, it's never right to do wrong. I mean, uh, Bob Jones, uh, uh, senior, made that statement. It's never right to do wrong that good might occur. Uh -huh. I mean, we, we even though the ends, we, the ends does not justify the means. That's a phrase we've heard all our life, and it's so true. Um, but. I can't blame my father out there for wanting justice. You right. know, I'm not saying that if they carry it out and do it the, in their, take it in their own hands, then that makes them wrong, and that's you know that's not scriptural or biblical. Well, one of the men yesterday that was interviewed had done things to his own daughter, mm -hmm. and I thought about how does the mother handle that? How does the mother deal with that? How does the mother forgive that? How I, I don't know. I don't know. And I just wondered how do sane people, because at the time you find out that's happened to your child, you become an insane person for a moment because you don't, well, the, there's no instance, justification for how yeah, you feel. At in that, that instance, she, she discovered then that she lost a husband too. Yeah. You know, so she, even no matter what he had done to her before that moment, he was 
you know, her, her husband. It was very hard yeah. to, to watch um, this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, and, and but this is reality. This is mm -hmm. what people are facing mm -hmm. every, every day. day. Every and day. And I, I received an email last week um, from somebody that I had helped years ago. Um, I, I didn't realize I'd helped them. I had just gave them some tickets to a concert, and they came, and during that concert was able to face some things similar to what we're talking about, and, mm -hmm. and they were thanking me for giving those tickets because it was during that concert that they received the strength and direction to go ahead and do certain things to move forward. I think it's important that we allow people to know that it is okay and it's necessary to talk about these things, mm -hmm. you know, because if you hold them in, you, you, you hold in, there's children, there's people out there that in their childhood had faced certain things that they blame themselves now for because they have these certain feelings. Why did feelings. you let that happen? Why did I let Why it did happen? You, you know, What's yeah. wrong with me? Right. I mean, right. you know. That was one of the things I hit on yesterday. Yeah. It is never the child's fault. No, it's never, not. Never, never. No. Uh, no, never. I mean, uh, and so it's important for people to realize it is okay to talk about these things mm -hmm. and no, this is not normal. I mean, it's not normal, so you have to deal with those situations. Well, our guest that was on three weeks ago <clears throat> told me, he said, no, no limitations. You can talk to me about anything. And um, we missed talking about some of the things because he said in his family he was told, it's kind of like the military, uh, don't ask, don't tell. You know, at his family it was, you know, you don't disrupt our beautiful, perfect family by saying these things happen. Shut your mouth. And, and I said as a, I think he's 72 now, and at 57 years old he was finally able to face that. And I just sat there in awe of him because he's a very smart man, very smart man. Right. But all his life he blamed himself until he was 57 years old. So think about that, the damage you do to a child. Um, this week we are going to start doing counseling again. On Thursday we will have another counselor with us. Next Monday we will have another one. If you have issues, you would like to talk to either of these counselors, we're going to supply their phone numbers. We're going to try to do something. That will, a lot of people have contacted me and said, Sherry, I don't have the money for a counselor. I just can't afford counseling. I'm dealing with this, this, and this. So I've been reading the emails, and I have been blown away, touched, um, disheartened, heartened. Um, I, I, my soul has been just dug up because I'm thinking, I'm not the only person who has this problem. I'm not the only person who's had to deal with this. I'm not the only person who didn't protect their children. I'm not the only person that allowed this to happen. My gosh, there's a world full of perpetrators. And in one of the books I read said, <clears throat> in order to recover, you must face the person who did this to you and say, I'm taking my life back and it's over. I can't imagine that. I can't imagine having the power to do that. So I hope Thursday you will tune in to um, to hear um, why Bob left home at 14, the things that happened, his weren't, his weren't um, sexual things that happened to him, it was physical, it was a physical thing, abuse. And, and when you think about children, these are children, it is, our, it is our duty to protect these children, and quite often the children are not protected. And there's all types of abuse, there's oh, physical, yeah. like mental. There's mental, the mental, mental abuse. There's and a I lot think of that's, that goes on. That's one of the things we start talking about in the seminar, mm -hmm. um, because I, Talk about mental abuse, oh man. You know, and, and I, I sent my sister um, part of the book I'm writing and she, she sent me an email and she said, wow. She said, you made me relive my childhood. Well, my sister was abused terribly when she was nine years old. She didn't deal with that till she was 40. And she said, now for her to relive our childhood through my, she said, you're telling it just like it happened and I didn't remember it until you wrote this. And she said, then you brought back every childhood memory I had. And I thought, oh, because maybe I brought back that bad childhood memory. But she said, no, I dealt with that. I put it away when I was 40 years old. I finally dealt with it. But there are so many children out there that I'm hearing from their moms. I'm hearing from teenagers. This is a hurting world. Right. And, and, and people can't afford counseling. And that's why I think it's important to do what we are about to do. Well, yeah. And, and over in Isaiah, when they were announcing the prophecy of the coming Lord, you know, this is a wonderful thing that people need to realize. Uh, I don't take, I don't want to take away from counselors. I mean, that, that, I don't want to do that. I think if there's a way that you can talk to some people, that is a good, is a good idea. Um, I would encourage them to be of the same faith of, right. or same type of belief that you do. 
um, because you know humanism and, and that of uh, you, you know just speaking to yourself being a good person stuff that's that's one thing and in its place is is a, is, is a whole different story but for those that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ um, scriptural based counseling is, is definitely recommended but even if you can't afford a, a counselor this this is what is amazing thing and Isaiah it says he shall be called wonderful and the next title he's given is counselor uh -huh. um, right. Uh, what I'm trying to say is the greatest counselor in the world mm -hmm. is free, mm -hmm. and that's the Lord. And the only way to get that counseling is to spend time in prayer. That's you talking to God. Right. Reading your Bible is Him talking to you. That's free counseling. Right. And so uh, in the midst of uh, looking for counseling in this life, um, and maybe you can't afford that, Always remember, you do have that counseling. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, uh, so, That's and right. that counseling comes through personal Bible study. It comes through going to church and listening to preaching, radio. Right. We, we're blessed in our country at this point to still have the opportunity to turn on the radio, to watch television. There's counseling there right. that's free. That's right. That God will bless you. If you, if you, if you want <laughs> help, you can get help. Yeah. Well, we hope... We hope every week to encourage you to to seek out some help to uh, maybe join a, a a group. You know there are, there's Al-Anon, there's Alcoholics Anonymous, there there are counseling grief groups. There are all kinds because because you are dealing with a lot out there, and your emails have proven that to me. Blew me away, blew my mind as I read them. I thought, wow, wow, I didn't know that. Oh gosh, you know, and I just I, I've been blown away. So. So thank you for participating and letting me know what's happening with right. you. Um, Thursday is going to be a special day. Um, I think it's going to be an interesting day. I know next Monday will also be. Ann will be back, and we will be talking about some of the things we had on just a little bit a few weeks ago. Uh, there is recovery, and there is wellness. There is wellness, but you have to move on beyond. Well, another thing, a lot of churches have counseling mm -hmm. available. There's uh, there's a there's a relatively new, I would say, it's been around for a while now, that some churches are using a, an addiction program called Reformers Unanimous. Because there's two sides to this thing. If there's a person that, if there is a person that is abusive, mm -hmm. uh, whatever way, um, that's, there's, there's help for them too, mm -hmm. you know. And um, there's, uh, like I said, there's Alcoholics Anonymous, there's um, Narcotics Anonymous and yeah. stuff like that. There's also faith-based programs like Reformers Unanimous right. is, is a program that's out there. And that's just one of many, I'm sure. But, you know, I would contact your local churches to find out what you can do yeah. to get help. But don't sit at home and let it overwhelm you. I mean, no. I think that's mm -hmm. the whole key to this. We have now opened up an avenue for you to walk into and, and, and find help. And, and we're going to, you know, I think having these counselors on will help. And uh, both of them are willing to, to come on board and... And I think it's going to be good for all of us. I think it's going to be good for all of us. And um, hats off to Miss Oprah yesterday because she she did something that um, I don't know that I could have done uh, to sit in the room with those four men who had who had done the crimes they had done to children. That was pretty tough. That was pretty tough. Today we have to go to our sponsors. That's part of the deal. And David White, honey, I have to tell you, we found this. It was behind us behind a newspaper. So we're going to give you. We're going to send you your picture back. It is going to go to the Blue Ridge office, and you can pick it up. Um, there you go. It is uh, Brother Matt singing with Miss Rita and Corey up at Inspiration Park for the last time ever because that park is now closed. But anyway, there, there you go, David. We found your picture. We're going to go right now. We have found some sponsors. They're awesome folks, and they help us do what we do best. We do best five days a week right here with y'all. Um, today is always Inspirational Tuesday. Matt chooses a message based on what he is feeling at the moment. What is the message about today? It's uh, between the promise and the port, talking about uh, the Lord promised the disciples, said, let us go to the other side of the sea. And the next chapter starts um, there in verse 1. It said, when they were come to the other side of the sea. It does, you know, in between there, there's some things that took place, and that's mm -hmm. what we're going to talk about. We're going to make it. Mm -hmm. Every one of us going to make it. But... Um, there's some things that will take place in between. We'll see that. <clears throat> well, right now, we're going to go to our sponsors and to Rich Scott and Trading Time. And then we're going to do about, <clears throat> excuse me, about eight minutes of the first time Angela was late. This is a hoot. And I can remember sitting here on the set looking around. Where is my co-host? Where is my co-host? Yesterday, something happened to Angela that um, I would have blown a gasket. I would have been angry. I would have been out there kicking and stomping, but she just said, okay, mom, what next? What next is gonna happen to me? 
this kid has spent months out walking, picking up aluminum cans. She had picked up about $60 worth of, alum of aluminum cans. <clears throat> well, she didn't have a truck to take them to cash them in. She brought them all up to our business. And she had them sitting by our front door under our awning to turn in today to get gas money to go to Kentucky to visit her child. Well, guess what? Some jerk stole her aluminum cans. So Angela sucked it up and she went on and she said, Mom, I'll find another way to get to Kentucky. She must not be my child because I would still be out there kicking the wall where the cans had been stolen from. And for you perpetrators <laughs> out there who might have done this, it blew my mind. This kid has been fighting medical bills, fighting her house payment, bills, fighting all these things. She is now beginning to look good again. She's putting on a little weight. She's feeling a little bit better. We're so encouraged. When we walked in yesterday and somebody had stole all those huge bags of aluminum cans because she picked up a bunch of cans, and she must know if y'all got them cans, you know there was a whole lot of beer cans in there. They were not hers. She has been walking, picking up cans. Now, she's been walking, picking up cans for about three months to get up about $60 worth of cans mm. and some idiot stole them. Hope you did well with the money. You know, it just blew my mind. If it's not yours, don't touch it. You know, I've had my jewelry stolen. Angela's now had her aluminum cans. For goodness sakes, these were aluminum cans. And we called the recycling place and they said, oh yeah, we got a lot of cans this morning. Well, yeah, I'm sure you did, you know. Yeah. They don't, you can't identify a stolen aluminum can, but shame on whoever stole her aluminum cans. But she had this positive attitude. She said, whatever, you know, it was good exercise to pick up all those cans. So she had a little positive note to it, and I'm thinking, I am ready to choke somebody out. But um, she rocked on, and she just rocked on, and she said, I'll be okay. I'm still going to Kentucky. And I just thought, dadgummit, dadgummit. You know, when you face more than you think you ought to be facing, sometimes you take the negative attitude. And she just said, it's okay. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. And I thought, man, well, yeah, man. But she's got more peace then. So she does. Good. She does. And she handled it. So right now, in honor of Angela's great attitude, we're going to go to, after our sponsors and after trading time, just a few minutes of the first time ever that Angela was late because it put mom in a pickle. I was sitting here in a pickle for just a minute. And then when you see why she was late, you will understand. You will understand. Georgia now today. Does that look good? Yeah. It looks like Angela's in her seat. Guess what? She's not, guys. For the past Where 48 years, the Bargain Barn has been North Angela Georgia's hunting and fishing action. headquarters. She really just We're wanted me to show you all this great photo. That's pretty good. Now, Click It did this photo. Looks pretty good, doesn't it, guys? We also have it in black and white. For you folks who are having gardens this year, we decided we would offer you something that not everyone can offer. Not everyone has a scarecrow who looks like this. But uh, what do you think about this scarecrow? <laughs> Good Friday to everybody. This is the time people are thinking about gardening, thinking about planting. What do you think about that? I think, oh my God. <laughs> Pretty good. Never be in charge of a blind, deaf dog. <laughs> Do you forget? Gets lost in the woods. Oh no, you have been chasing. Oh candy. no, candy. We got to tell y'all this story. This is so cool. That's why I see it in text. I'm listen, on the way. Listen to this. Her ex, husband, her ex husband got on a plane yesterday, headed for Germany. Now he yes. was, he was headed to Germany. Yes. The plane was headed to the tarmac at Hartsville, where it sat for hours and hours, hours. and hours. Yes. And when he left, he left Angela with the blind dog, the well, blind old dog. Yes, and the reason is because I was her mommy right. when we were married. Right, for t 12, yep. 14 years, you yep. were that dog's mommy. Mom. So, so today, how many hours have you been wandering through oh the woods? God, about 45 minutes. Uh-huh. And, and what did you tell the dog? If you don't get in here soon... She can't hear. I know. That's the problem. She can't hear and she can't see. It's kind of like a man I'm looking for. And, <laughs> see, normally when I let her out at my house, she stays right at the back where Mystic goes. She smells. Uh -huh. And I never worry about her. 
but I put her out and then I got in the shower. Mm -hmm. And when I came back dressed, she was gone. Oh, and she no. can't hear. Oh, you no. have to like um, beat or make a really loud vibration for her to hear you. Mm -hmm. So she couldn't hear me yelling. So I had to go tracking through the woods. The poor dog was scared to death. She was shaking. She can't walk. We call her grandma. She's got hip <laughs> problems. And I'm God, thinking. sounds like my knee and my hip's killing me today, I'm thinking Siggy's in Germany, Tori's in Kentucky, and I've killed the dog. <laughs> great. <laughs> this is a great Friday. So it was either, oh, my God, my mama's going to kill me, or them two are going to kill me. I'll just shoot myself <laughs> and be done with it. But you probably so, locked your gun in the house. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, I do that kind of stuff. What so, color are your roots, naturally? They're blonde. <laughs> so it was And a, you choose to color your hair because? <laughs> to try to fool people. <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> so it was either a combination of y'all come to my funeral this weekend by death of one of the three, or I just find the dog, bite the bullet, and come in two minutes late. And did you find the dog? I found her, and she was pitiful. Really? She was shaking and scared, and I felt like crap. Now, now the other part of this story is if her ex-husband wasn't so dadgum stingy, he'd have a fence for the dog. Well, she's too old, though. What you mean she's too old? She's, you can put me no, in a fence and I can do it. She's, she's really got too many health problems now, oh. and that's why we can't board her, because she'll have a heart attack. In oh. kennel. Yeah. Well, good. Keep that in mind when you think of putting me in the nursing home. <coughs> Say, yeah. I really don't want to board my mom because she might have a heart attack. <laughs> yes. I mean, she, you know, my house has a lot of stairs in it, and she even falls. I have to tote her up most of the stairs in my house. Oh, no. She's, it's really sad, but wow. she's getting to the point. I mean, she's still happy and everything, but mm -hmm. no, she was scared to death this morning when I found her, and she was shaking, and I was like, oh, my yeah, God. Why do you think she wandered? Because it was She got familiar? disoriented. Okay. She doesn't have all her senses. Right. And she just, she got lost, and I'm... Do we need to tell I'm, the sad thank story God of the she's last white. dog? Okay. So... Do we need to tell the sad story of the last dog who wandered away, and you'll know why she is so paranoid about yes. this? I had a poodle that was my baby. He was a miniature poodle. He went blind. He lost his hearing. And um, when we had Tori, he got really, really obsessive jealous of her. So we... No, that's an understatement. Yeah. He did not like that child at yeah. all. Couldn't stand the baby. He was my he baby. So baby. my mother-in-law, Siggy's mama, took the dog in, and that way we kept him in the family. Well, long story short, we had him for about 16 years, which is really old for a miniature poodle. And he was deaf, blind, you know, all this good stuff. So whenever he went out to potty, you had to stay with him. Well, my mother-in-law had a nice pond in the backyard. Nice pond. Nice pond. My mother-in-law was very, very good to Sparky, and I appreciate that. Lord rest her soul in heaven. She's probably with him now. Oh, yeah. Siggy won't ever see him again, however, because <laughs> Siggy thought Sparky needed some fresh air. Well, see, you like me this morning had a stupid moment. Mm -hmm. Forgot the dog's blind and deaf. Couldn't find him. It got dark. The neighbors found poor Sparky the next morning floating in the pond. He drowned. Sparky drowned, and I'll never forgive him for that. So You're not supposed to hold grudges. No, but when I almost killed his dog today, <laughs> my heart was palpitating. I'm like, Lord, I didn't mean it. I promise. <laughs> he killed mine, but I'll not kill his. Yeah. So, yeah. So Candy's fine. She's Your back nerves in, are a My little nerves bit. are shot. <laughs> <laughs> but she's in the house. So Good. Yes. Good. Okay. Well, we have got a busy day. And Lord, how mercy them women yesterday. I've just got to say, I saw that again last night. Well, oh, oh, to say. Hello. <laughs> We're back. Okay. That was Angela, the first and only time she's ever been late, late. And um, she kind of took it in stride and she found the dog. She came flying in here and she handled it. She handles things pretty well. She handles things pretty well. Unlike her, you know, I used to have a temper. I've never seen Angela's temper. I wonder if she has one. I oh, used to have a temper, a temper, but my temper's <laughs> gone, so I don't know where it went. Man, I used to sell dishes. I used to, and I think as we grow and mature, maybe we come through some things, but, but good job, Ange. 
for handling yesterday's event better than your mom would have handled it. I'd have blown a gasket and it wouldn't have done any good. It wouldn't have done any good. Yeah. But, um, you know, if something doesn't belong to you, leave it alone. Leave it alone. That's it. Well, my brother and I are two opposites. We used Which to be one, a whole lot, yeah. Okay. We used to be a whole lot more opposite than what we are now. I think in his, as he grows older, He's Look, mellow, he's got he's about mellowing. six kids. That's just wore yeah, him four. out. He's got four children. <laughs> he, uh, he is mellowing, and, and I'm kind of as not as patient as I used to be. I, I try to be, but oh well. Um, but he always called me the slow burner. You know, uh -huh. I'm, I'm one of these that takes a lot to get me riled up, but once I'm there, oh yeah, I just get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, because uh, yeah. I may be a slow burner, but I'm also uh -huh. a slow cooler. So, uh -huh. so. See, I used to be like that, and and have you ever? held a grudge or pouted or you know because you got to get over that you just got to get over that because i don't know i mean i i'm sure i have i don't i try not to but i mean because it just makes me it miserable eats you yeah up. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, yeah i i try not to yeah i guess i'm sure i have <laughs> surely not perfect <laughs> yeah. matt oh, no, no. <laughs> well you've got a perfect message today and it is going to convince us all that no matter what we're facing we will get to the other side yeah yeah, it's in Mark chapter number 4, and a great passage of Scripture. The Lord was finishing up some ministry on this side and on one side of the sea, and he tells his disciples to get into the boat and go to the other side. So uh, it, it's in Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through 40. Well, actually, we're going to go through chapter 5, verse 1, just a little bit into the other uh, chapter. But in Mark chapter number 4, verse 35 through 41, it, it says, and the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. If you have a red letter edition, the, the words let us pass over unto the other side is in, in red. That is, of course, indicating that Jesus spoke those words. So he, he looks at his disciples and he says, Let us pass over to the other side. And then verse number 36, And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, the Lord Jesus, of course, even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, speaking of Jesus, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and said, say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose, and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Now the very first part of chapter number 5, verse number 1 says, And they came over unto the other side of the sea. So in verse 35 of chapter 4, Jesus says to his disciples, Let us pass over to the other side. Chapter 5, verse 1 says, And they came over unto the other side. So Jesus said, we're going to go over to the other side, and they did. But in between, between that promise of going to the other side and pulling into the port on the other side of the sea, there was the passage that took place. And we need to look at that because, spiritually speaking, we can look and see how it applies to our life and see the similarities on what takes place. When a person accepts Christ, they all automatically get the promise that you're going to heaven. And what a joy that that is. Now, that does not mean life is going to be perfect. Some people will evangelist out there and teachers and speakers will tell you if you want to change your life except Jesus and and everything's going to get better everything's going to, just going to be a bed of roses the life is going to be just wonderful well I'm not saying it's not a wonderful life to trust the Lord but it's not a perfect life it's not uh, it's not a life that's going to be easy it's not a life that's going to be without problems the Bible says that it rains on the just and the unjust there's problems for everybody the difference is we have somebody with us, and we'll look at that as we look through this. There's three simple points about this message of between the promise and the port, and that is, first of all, there's problems. Uh, there, there's, there are problems in our life. We all face problems. The Bible says that man is born of a woman in a few days, and he's full of trouble. Um, all that live godly and in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. There's going to be problems in our life. Uh, we know that the Bible teaches us that people all over that had great faith still experience great difficulties. There's, there's situations in our life that are going to take place that we, we have to step back and say, Lord, what's, what's the problem? Why are we having these situations? Well, 
God never wastes problems in our life. They're all, they're all used to teach us patience. They're used to teach us that God will come through, and He always has. If you look back in your own life, you realize God has always come through for you and brought you through every situation. The very fact that you're breathing today and living today is the fact that God has brought you through several difficulties in your life. And He's, we, we, our, you know, our family just learned a song, and I love the song. It says, I've been through enough to know that He'll be enough for me. Uh, I've already been through enough problems to know that whatever problems I'll face in the rest of my life, He's going to be sufficient and enough for me. In this passage of Scripture, in uh, chapter 4, verse 35, it says, In the same day when the evening was come, He saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. Verse 36, And when they had sent away the multitude, they took Him even as He was in the ship, and there were also with Him other little ships. Verse 37, And there arose a great storm of wind, and waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. Have you ever felt like the storm, spiritually speaking, that you're facing today, that, that you just, it's full, that your ship is full, you can't take on anymore? By all rights, this ship should have sunk. Um, a good principle here is as long as Christ is on board, he won't, your ship won't sink. Um, it may feel like it, and maybe under normal circumstances, that amount of water should cause your ship to sink. But as long as Jesus is on board, you're not going to sink. You will make it to the other side. That's a great principle because there have been times in my life I didn't think I could take any more. I just thought, well, you know, what else is going to take place? Uh, I even look at right now, and this to me is, is a little thing because it's just things, and we know the Lord's going to take care of it. But I, I look at, okay, my car's broke down. I'm fixing to drive to Florida to try to get it fixed to try to save some money because I've got a friend down there that has better connections to get some parts and so on and so forth. I'm getting ready and packing and burning CDs that didn't work today. <laughs> and I, I go through all those things and, and then I go out there and find out my, my truck's messed up too. And now when I get back, I'll have to face that. And you think, well, okay, what's next? What, what else is going to happen? Now, there's, there's a lot of people that are even watching today. You're facing a whole lot more difficulties and troubles than I'm facing in car trouble. So I'm not... Uh, it's an amazing thing. I've, I'm at this point right now. I have a lot of peace about it. It's like, okay, just another way for God to show me how he's going to provide for me. He's going to take care of the car. He'll take care of the truck. He'll take care of anything that I'm about to face. But there are, have been times when maybe in your life you think, okay, I can't take any more. I, I'm going under. I'm, I'm sinking. Can I? But as long as Christ is on board, your ship will not sink. It says here, and there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the sheep, into the ship, and so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship. So there are problems in our life. There are great problems. There are problems that humanly we can't handle. See, some people, and I've said this before in some of the devotions before, but I want to drive it home to where we all understand this. A lot of people say, well, the Bible says God won't put on us more than we can handle. Um, I encourage you, and I challenge you. Show me that in the Bible. That is really not what the Bible says. The Bible, I think when people are saying that, they're referring to a verse, and I believe the verse says this, that there is no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man, but God will with that temptation make a way of escape. So we almost try to make that sound like, well, God's not going to put on me more than I, I can bear. I don't believe that that's what the Bible teaches. Because humanly speaking, you see some people go through life and you think, how in the world are they making it? That, that's more than one human being can take. Um, and I look at that and you say, well, how, you know, I've always heard that God won't put on us more than we can bear. I don't believe that, and this is why. The Bible says, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Um, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. These verses like this. My belief is that God sometimes will put on you more than you can handle. And the, and the reason he does that is to show you you can't handle this, so you have to turn to the Lord. Because here's my saying. Instead of saying God can't put on you, God won't put on you more than you can bear, I say God will put things on you more than you can bear, but he'll never put anything on you that he can't bear. You have to turn and give that burden to the Lord. Sometimes we're under so much pressure and so much stress, and we say, I can't take it anymore. He says, I know you can't. I, but I can. I can handle this. If you'll give this problem to me, I'll take care of it for you. So if you think maybe you're in your life you can't take anymore, well, uh, realize you can't. So just give it over to the Lord. Uh, you've never 
had a burden that his shoulders can't bear. He will take care of you. Uh, there are problems in this life, and we're all going to face them. It's a good thing that if we can realize early in our problems to turn to the Lord and know that he's going to be there and that he's going to take care of that situation, but you can't handle it. These disciples, had they tried to uh, arrive to the other side of the sea without consulting the Savior, they would have drowned because the problem was greater than they could bear, but it wasn't greater than the Lord could bear. Always remember, you will never face anything that God can't handle and that he won't handle if you'll turn it over to him. He'll take care of it for you. So there's problems in this life. The next point you're going to see is even though there's problems, there's a presence. My favorite verse is Hebrews 13:5. And that verse says, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Yes, I, I wish I could tell you there would be no problems. But uh, there are going to be problems. Yes, there are problems. We all face problems. Lost people face problems. Saved people face problems. The thing that separates us is Jesus is with us. He doesn't leave us during those hard times. You may have people that claim to be your friends, but when you're having difficulty, you can't find them. They're not, they're not going to help you through those times. When things are going good, they'll be there, but when they're not, then they're not going to be around. Um, we all have had those fair-weather friends. But Jesus is not a fair-weather friend. He is an all-weather friend. If you, see, he was with them when they were on the sea shore, when they were safe and everything like that, but he was also with them and didn't leave them when things got rough. Uh, the old phrase says, when, the when things get going tough, the tough get going. Well, God never leaves you. He will never, ever, ever leave you. No matter what you face in this life, he will not leave you. Um, Jesus, when he left this world, he said, I will not leave you comfortless, but I'll send you a comforter which will be with you, and he'll be in you, uh, and he'll abide with you forever. So you have the promise from the scriptures that he will not leave you. He didn't promise you wouldn't have storms. He said, I won't leave you in the storm. What a promise that that is. You say, well, right now I feel like I'm just under so much pressure and I'm under so much stress and I'm facing things that nobody understands. Well, he understands. Not only does he understand, he's with you. There is a presence. Now, I have to say, um, the, you know, Paul talked about glorying in tribulations. How can you glory in a tribulation? How can you glory through some things that are heartbreaking and and stuff like this. I have to say that some of the sweetest fellowship that I have enjoyed with the Lord happened in the midst of a storm. And the reason is because I had got to the place that I knew I couldn't handle it. Humanly, there was no answer and no solution, but he was there and he took care of it for me. And I think what a, what a privilege it is. Some of the sweetest fellowship you'll ever enjoy. And if you look back at your life, you'll, you'll see this and see it's a pattern in our lives that uh, not that you'd wish to go through those heartaches that you're go you've gone through, but in those times of heartache, you've always sensed his presence in the midst of that storm. So what a, what a blessing to know that his presence is there and it will always be there. So you have the problems, but you have the presence. You'll never have a problem where you won't have his presence. He will be with you always, even unto the end of the world. That's what he said, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. He's going to be there. He's faithful, and he's always going to be faithful to you. And then not only do we see in verse 37, it says, There arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on the pillow. And they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Um, isn't it amazing that sometimes in our life we even get to the place, even our troubles, even though we know that he's been there through every step that we've taken and taken care of us through every problem that we've ever faced, we get to the place sometimes we just throw our hands up, God, don't you even care? I, I, you say, well, I've never, I don't question the Lord. Well, I have. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I have questioned God. Why did this happen? Uh, I don't think it's wrong to question God. If God, We serve a God that does not move without a purpose or plan. Everything he does, there's a reason for it. We may not understand that reason, but there is a reason for it. And I think we do God an injustice by not saying, God, what are you trying to teach me through this situation? Now, if I am angry and I'm just ugly with God and I accuse him of doing something wrong, well, that's pro that, that we know that that's wrong. But to ask God, Lord, what are you showing me through this heartache that I'm facing? That's not wrong. Jesus himself, when he was dying on the cross, said, my God, my God, why? So he asked God and showed us that it wasn't wrong to ask God why. If we're showing it out of a heart of, uh, motivated by a sincere desire to know the will of God in every situation. So it's not wrong to ask God.
But there have been times I've been frustrated in, in the midst of saying, God, what, why? Why? I share a funny story sometimes, and, and I keep saying I'm going to write a book about it, but, um, and it's, it's maybe not as funny to you, but it was to me. One Sunday morning, I, the book that I say I'm going to read, uh, that I'm going to write one day is, How Can God Get Glory Out of a Broken Shoelace? And you think, well, what are you talking about? One particular Sunday morning, I was rushing around. I had been out traveling, singing, and I had come in, and I was trying to get ready. I was rushing to get ready to go to church and trying to serve the Lord. And as far as I knew, I was in the will of God at that time and trying to do what was right. Uh, all I was doing was trying to get ready to go to church. Um, seemed like everything had gone wrong. Uh, so I don't know all the situation that was going around, but I was very, very frustrated, very, very uh, tensed up trying to get ready to go. I bent over to tie my shoe, and my shoelace breaks. Now, we serve a God that can do anything, right? And that means that he can make a shoelace not break. All right, so why did my shoelace break? <laughs> and I thought, why? What? And I did. I literally held that shoelace in my hand, and I looked up, and I said, uh, now, God, how can you get glory out of this? I'm trying to be on time and go to church. And I was just frustrated. And maybe you, maybe I'm sure you're a whole lot more perfect than I am, and you've never been frustrated, but I was frustrated on that Sunday morning, and I took that shoelace and threw it down on the ground. I said, now, how can you get glory out of this? I'm just trying to serve you. That's how human I am. So you may never want to hear me again, but that's just the way I was. And over a little thing, it was just the straw that broke the camel's back that Sunday morning. But I wondered why. Why? We don't know why some of these take, things take place, but sometimes God just wants us to stop and acknowledge His presence and know that He's going to take care of the situation. In this, they were so distraught that they said, Master, do you not even care? Do you not even care? To ask the God that was sending His Son to die on the cross for their sins, do you care? It seems like such a foolish question, and it is, but it shows how desperate we as humans get. But there is a presence, and he's never going to leave you, and he's never going to forsake you. What takes place then? We have the problems, we have the presence, and finally we see here, And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. In verse number 37, you see that there arose a great storm. But in verse number 39, there's a great calm. For every great storm that I've had in my life, every tragedy that's ever taken place in my life, I have to look back and confess he was there all the time. Not only that he was there all the time, following that great storm, there was a period of great storm. I've heard it said, and I've even said this, that if you're not in a storm, you're either in the middle of a storm, coming out of a storm, or going into the storm. And I think I have to correct that because for every storm that I've ever faced, there was a period, may, may not have been a long time, but there was a time of peace and a great time of fellowship with God that brought me through that storm so that there was a great peace. So remember that even though there's problem, there are some peace, and we can also have peace in the midst of the storm. I've experienced recently some peace about things that, you know, I, normally I would have been like the day I broke my shoelace and just all frustrated, but you know what? God's been there. He's going to take care of us. If He can take care of times where there's broken shoelaces, he can take care of times of vehicles broke down, times of personal sickness, whatever. He's going to take care of you. He's not going to leave you, and he's going to give you a peace. What I'm trying to say is in verse 35, he said, let us pass to the other side. He's told every one of us, let us go over to the other side. Verse number one of chapter five, they came over to the other side of the sea. It's going to happen. One day, the ship of Zion will pull into the port on heaven's bright shore, and we'll be at peace forever evermore. And we'll look back at that passage, the times that, between that promise of let's go to the other side and realize, you know what, we made it. We made it, and it was all because he was with us and he took care of us. Father, thank you for your grace. Thank you for always being with us. Thank you for always being there. Forgive us for the times that we've doubted you. And Lord, for that person that's watching today that's discouraged, I pray that you might encourage them, uplift them, help them to realize no matter what they're facing that the anchor holds and uh, will always hold. And I pray that they'll realize we're going to make it to the other side. Just we have to face some of these things to sometimes to be an example to others, sometimes just to show ourselves that you're there and that we can always come to you, that our, that our means and our, our working is, is really helpless without just trusting you. Thank you for being with us and the promise that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. In Christ's name, amen. Good message. Good message. And we are going to get through it. I have some very special prayer requests, and we're going to get ready for you to sing a couple of songs. 
winter either way isn't going to happen because the CD didn't work. And that's <laughs> just today. a part of life. That's, that's right. just a part yeah. of life. Um, some very special prayer requests. And I want to read a note that I got. Uh, Dear friends, I ask that you remember my husband and me in prayer this week. Eddie had surgery on Monday. He had a heart attack in April. Now he must have another stent put in, not doing too good. Me, well, I fell about three weeks ago and cracked my tailbone, so it is very hard to get around, or should I say, up and down. Having no job or insurance is very stressful, so we need every prayer anyone can spare. If you wouldn't lean on God and good friends to stand by us, what would we have? Once again, I want to thank each and every one for the prayers already sent God's way. Love to you all, Betty Bingham. And, and everybody knows Betty and Eddie. And Jacqueline, our buddy, has been a big part of the community meal in McKaysville, so please, please pray for this family. Also, Ernest Gibbs, another one of the family members from the community meal family. Um, Ernest is usually sitting at the money table. He and his wife, Betty, have volunteered since day one. Ernest is in the, in the hospital up in Blairsville, and we'd ask you to please pray for that family. And for Holly Mullins up uh, in Pickens County down in the Hill City community, Please pray for this young mother. She uh, just had an MRI. She is going to have some results given to her on Thursday. Please pray that Thursday's results are positive and that she um, can handle whatever, whatever the Lord has in mind for her. What a beautiful young lady mm. with two beautiful daughters. So um, please pray for all those people. And now we have another announcement. Miss Jessica Hamrick would like to know if we would let everyone know about the Upward Car, Truck, and Motorcycle Show that will be on July 17th at First Christian Church of Jasper between 11 and 2. You can call her for more information at 706-253-7549. Well, we're going to go to the obits right now, and um, that is a part of life. That is a part of life. And, and this week, I, I was listening to the obits and, and heard a lady that I met a long time ago that um, passed away from the same old thing we all hear every single day, yeah. cancer, cancer. Yeah. Um, so early detection, we talk about it every single moment of my life because Angela, luckily, Luckily, early detection, so we hope everything will turn out if you take care of yourself. Get yourself tested. Get your pap test. Get those great colonoscopies, and David White had great results with that. So, um, you know, each and every one of you, take care of yourselves and, and know my mom made a fatal mistake. She trusted prayers only instead of trusting the doctor. And um, I guess maybe Mama had too much faith. I don't know. She should well, have gone on the doctor. Well, not necessarily she had too much faith, but uh, also realized God has provided us doctors. And Absolutely. We, That's know. what we told her. Mama, right. the reason there's a phone book there is to call a good doctor. If you have medical issues, pray about it and then call a good doctor. Right now we're going to go to the obits and to the uh, weather. They're, they're, yeah, there's no they're, obits They're today. not done. So oh, news. well, that's good news. That's good news. Yeah. So let's go to the weather and let's get Brother Matt set up. And we're going to ask a trivia question because guess what I did? We got one more of Jennifer's small town history. I talked to you a little bit about um, a group yesterday from Fort Payne, Alabama. And this is the newspaper from that, the Times Journal. If you can tell me the lead singer for the group, Alabama, these bronze statues were just put in place in Fort Payne, Alabama. This is another day trip I'm going to suggest for you. If you have not been to Fort Payne, go over to DeSoto Park, uh, hang out at the park, sit on the rocks, watch the beautiful waterfalls, and then go downtown and see these gorgeous um, bronze statues. Call me at 866-939-2329. And tell me, who was the lead singer for the group Alabama? Now, in the next few weeks, I'm going to get to interview somebody I've really, really wanted to interview for a long time. Um, his name is Billy Joe Royal, and he does a song about a residence where you might live. And it is called Down in Something. So if you can call me at 866-939-2329, you're going to win a Goss Tractor tag and hat. And Billy Joe Royal is one of those 60s icons, one of those guys who is still around after many, many years of singing. And the song that he is most famous for talks about down somewhere. So call me at 866-939-2329 if you can tell me where is Billy Joe Royal down at. And uh, right now we're going to go to the weather while we set Brother Matt up to do a couple of songs. Oh, 
Wait a minute, we're going to have to take a break. We've got a problem with Matt's mic, and this, oh, it sounded great in the studio. It's coming across great. Somehow in audio, they're not getting a feed on it. So, welcome to live TV. Uh, whoa, like we needed this. Matt, do you think this is a sign of the times? I told you we should have come in here with Jack today <laughs> Instead of water, this has been one of those days. We have got to get it together now and check his mic. I'm so sorry, and I, I hate it because he's going to have to start that song over. Good thing about it, it's a great song. So you're going to get to hear that song in its entirety one more time, but we're going to take a break right now and let them fix whatever is wrong. They are going to go to the community calendar. And while we're playing with the community calendar, we're gonna see if we can't fix this mic. It sounded great in the studio. Everything about it was dead on perfect. But somehow, some way, this mic has gone crazy. 
It is just a sign of the times. It's like his transmission went down, his truck wouldn't crank. You know, Matt, is there something going on that we don't know about? <laughs> I don't know what is happening. But everywhere he's turned today, it's like the devil showed up double time. The devil showed up double time. He has a new mic now. We are going to try it one more time. Y'all should have been sitting in the studio. If all 80,000 of y'all were sitting here with me, we wouldn't have had a problem because it sounded great. It was coming across. It was coming through. I don't know what the problem was, but we now think we have it fixed. So welcome to North Georgia Now Today live. That's what happens. We just suck it up and deal with it. So we are now going to go back to Brother Matt Dibler singing live on NGN Today. friends loving words upon the cross he said as his blood stained it crimson red every time the hammer struck the nail with each drop of his blood that fell as the wind Tore his flesh in two with his last breath. Jesus said, I love you. Just like a lamb, he climbed up Calvary's hill. There to do his father's perfect will. On the cross, he would bleed and die for all mankind he became the sacrifice every time the hammer struck the nail with each drop of his blood that fell as the wind tore his flesh in two with his last breath, Jesus said, I love you. And every time the hammer struck the nail, with each drop of his blood that fell, as the whip tore his flesh in two, with his last breath, Jesus said, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Oh, wait. 
the sin of the world. One lamb, spotless lamb, precious lamb, God's lamb, Jesus, behold the lamb. took Isaac, he climbed Moriah's hill. By faith he had followed God, by faith he followed still. When Isaac saw no sacrifice, he questioned Abraham. But Abraham told Isaac, God shall provide himself a lamb, one lamb. His life shed his blood. One lamb took away the sin of the world. One lamb, spotless lamb, precious lamb, God's lamb, Jesus, behold the lamb. One lamb, spotless lamb, Precious Lamb, God's Lamb, Jesus, behold the Lamb. That boy operates well under pressure. Anybody else would have crushed, folded, laid down and screamed and kicked. He, he operates well. He and Angela may be related because they both handle crisis very, very well. I've got some birthdays, and I'm going to go through a lot of birthdays right now. Joshua Griggs, happy, happy birthday, sunshine. 22 years old from mom and dad on the 15th of June. And to Mr. Alex Bell, 16, oh my gosh, watch the roads from Aunt Shirley. Ronnie and Felicia, dad and mom, happy, happy birthday. And to Miss Holly Mullins. Um, Holly Mullins, we have asked prayer for her. Please continue to keep that family in your prayers. And the mom of two beautiful, beautiful little girls. Martha Baldwin, who is one of the most gorgeous ladies. She is so precious. Happy, happy birthday to Miss Martha. And to Kathy Vandiver, happy birthday to you. And to Bay Cagle, happy birthday to you. Bay is our, um, oh man, she is, she is a, She's a star. She's a star in her own right. She sings. She plays the piano. She is a great actress, and uh, we someday would like to see her on Broadway. Maybe after she raises all them kids. Yeah, maybe so. Alan Wigginton, happy, happy birthday at the Magistrate's Office in Pickens County. And to Miss Kaylee Senior Davis, happy birthday, sitting up in Dollywood. And I want to tell y'all, tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning, Wednesday morning, between the hours of about 7.30 and 9, Kaylee will be on the Today Show for a little glippet. You will just see a little piece with she and Dolly at the 25-year anniversary of Dollywood. So please tune into that tomorrow. Pre don't preempt us to tune into it. DVR it. You don't want to watch it. You want to watch us. But you want to have a little glip of what um, Miss Kaylee Senior is back working at Dollywood and loving every moment of it. And happy birthday again to Miss Taylor Engel. And happy birthday to Miss Inez Kirby from Sister Dorothy Hampton and to Miss Caroline Mullins, who is one of Holly's kids. So happy, happy birthday to all of you. You will all go in the birthday drawing, and just like every single week, we will give you a cake on Friday based on what bakery came on board to help us out. Today has been a testy day, to say the least. Um, maybe the tone started when your car had a problem. Maybe it started when your truck had a problem. Maybe it started because God figures you're strong enough to handle it all. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Did you already have this message prepared when things started going wrong? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all right. So did this message bring on these crazy things? Oh, yeah. you got to <laughs> practice what you preach. <laughs> So, I guess so. I guess uh, it's so. fine. It's just another thing. You know that you're heading into Florida where it's 105 heat index. Yeah. 
Stay safe when Pray you're out in this. Pray that my car makes it. Pray that his car makes it. It's making a racket like crazy, but oh, wow. it's going to make it. We're, 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 if not, I'm donating my car to wherever it is. I'm just, <laughs> just going to go. And you're going to get your 270,000 miles on it. Wow. So wow. I can't complain. It's been a good car. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, it started making a racket and took it in. Thought it was going to be something very simple, but ended up being very. Transmission. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. So, uh, but to rebuild it was going to be about 2,700. So oh, we're going to save about. $1,700 going this way, we hope. You hope. <laughs> and uh, so we're going to head down. Into <clears throat> we hope as you travel through South Georgia, where it is very, very hot, you do okay. You know, we have not had what Oklahoma's having, the rain and right. the flooding and the people dying. But we have had extreme heat. And today, when you're outside working, it is extremely hot. Be cautious. Be yeah. cautious. Yep. Sure is. Are you nervous about that trip, or is the Lord going to ride with you on your shoulder and you're no, going to be I'm okay? No, I'm just kind of going to take it as it goes. I've done what I can, and um, I'm doing what I think If you told to me do. I had to head somewhere in that car today, I just have to say, Lord, I just can't go. I've got to stay at the house. I'm, uh, it's all right. It'll be okay. Yeah, it'll, it'll be, be okay. You I've, have I've a got a lot faith. of friends going down. If I, I, <laughs> I, They may be getting called for me. <laughs> so, uh, But no, it'll be all right. I, you're going I down think. 75? Yeah, that's Truckers my plans. That's yeah, that's right. right. <laughs> I thought if I could find one with a low boy or something, I could pull up on the back and just ride down. That'd be really nice. That would but be not, good. Uh, Where are y'all singing this weekend? Do you know? Friday night. We're in. Well, that's uh, the, the reason we're doing this this way is Friday. We're actually in Live Oak, Florida. Uh -huh. So once I get the car fixed, we'll be back up there for Friday night, and that's the only singing we have. Then I start a meeting in North Carolina near Boone, North Carolina, Sunday through Wednesday. So. Yeah, so Revival? it's going to be busy. Yep. Good for yeah. you. What church will that be? <gasps> oh, gosh. Go to Morgan Matt Branch. Yeah, Morgan, Morgan Branch. Morgan Branch. Okay. There you go. <laughs> what is it near? Uh, mountains. <laughs> <laughs> I love to put him on the spot. Near, I just heard It's Elk Park, <laughs> North Carolina is actually what it okay. is. And, uh, anyway, it's Who's right up there near there. Who's church is it? Well, it's, there's some good friends of ours, Jack and Angie Hicks, and they're, um, they're some great people. And he owns a trucking company. This is the church that they attend. So um, you just said he's great and stupid in the same sentence. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's in the trucking company business. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Dummy. So, I'm a uh, dummy. <laughs> yeah. Well. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> His trucks are running. My car's one that needs fixing. So yeah, I'm not going to yeah, say anything. Yeah. But uh, no. Uh, anyway, yeah. It's uh, going to be a good meeting. We're looking forward to a beautiful place. How there. far is that drive? I mean, I'm trying to encourage people to take you a three-day day trip and go hear Brother Matt preach. That's going to be, it's probably an hour and a half above Asheville, North Carolina. Okay. So, yeah, it's going to be a good little ride. About six-hour drive, probably. Yeah. Somewhere close to that. Well, you, yeah, you can make it less than that. Is it kind of a touristy place? Or are there other things for people to do? Uh, Let's yeah. Let's get them up a three-day trip. They're all around there. Yeah. They, they are around there. They're, they're, I don't know that I've Boone, ever been to Boone. A lot of things going on up there that you can go sightseeing. Well, I have to like say that. this weekend we will be going to Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, going to Asheville and looking forward to that trip. I hope it cools off a little bit, but we're going to be taking the van with about 145,000 miles on it, so pray for us, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, have you been to the Biltmore House? I have been to the door of the Biltmore House, but didn't get to go. Do you not know that story? No. We drove. I've always wanted to go to the Biltmore House. We drive to the Biltmore House, and this is at the end of my husband's life, and I I said, oh, it's a walking trip. I said, oh, he can't do that. He's very, very sick. And so I go back to the car and I said, no, we can't do this because you have to walk a lot at this place and you can't do this. Well, we drove on to Charlotte Motor Speedway where the man walked around the track two and a half times. Now, he couldn't do the Biltmore House because his wife protecting him from hurting himself said, no, we'll do that another day. No, I've never been to the Biltmore House, but I've walked the Charlotte Motor Speedway two and a half times. So sometimes men have incentive and the initiative to do things that they really want to do. He really wanted to be on that Charlotte track, and, and he walked that Charlotte track two and a half times. It was hot. It was sweaty. I was miserable. 
But yeah, I've seen the Charlotte Track. No, I've never been to the Biltmore House, but I'm a going one day. Yeah, beautiful um, place. It is. It, it looks gorgeous. I actually got to see a video of it, and it looks like a special trip. But we're going to Asheville just to visit um, one of the Brackett's cousins, so mm -hmm. it's going to be fun. And it's a long trip. So, uh, but there you go. You know what we'll be talking about next Monday? The day trip to Asheville, and we will make it a day trip. We yeah. won't. You know, we'll just go up and spend the day and hang out and, and take some pictures of the beautiful mountains in North Carolina. Oh, good. So yeah, now, are you available to preach other times if folks are looking for a good preacher during revival or during uh, tent meetings or doing anything else? Whenever the Lord Would you preach in a tent that wasn't air conditioned? I have. <laughs> I have. Oh, it's hot. Yeah, I have. <laughs> it's hot. Well, we encourage you to check Matt Dibler out. Send him an email if you are interested in having he or his family come and sing. Now, we talked about Ball Grounds. You did a great job down there. They were really happy to have you. They're going to invite you back. Did you know you're going to be in Antioch Baptist Church over in Forsyth County in the near future? Yeah, we haven't set the date, but we will be. We yeah. have not, but we do know that the, well, I think the diplomats, diplomats will be That's there. Right. And what date is that? I don't know. I believe it's... <laughs> August the 14th, but I'm not uh, that's sure. Birthday. That's right. I yeah. believe it is. August the 14th, they will be at Antioch Baptist Church in Forsyth County. So it's close enough for folks from here to go there. And uh, I, I look forward to that day. It is also celebrating. And please get online and vote for the Bridgemans right now. You can go to the Bridgemans and it gives you a link. They are up for group of the year in the Atlanta market. So please get online and vote for the Bridgemans. They are my group of the year. Love right. those folks. Love those folks. Good but, um, you know, find a good church this weekend to visit or go to um, a singing. That's a great way to get a little boost and a little kick. And uh, we all enjoyed the singing over at Georgia Mountain Yeah, we Mountain always Fairgrounds. hope that the singing gets them ready to go to church on Sunday. That's what our desire is. So. Well, yeah. Georgia Mountain Fairgrounds is going to have a singing this year without the diplomats. First year that y'all won't be there. And I I'm, didn't realize that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm sad about that because it's the first year that they've skipped y'all. Y'all have been there a lot of years, but mm -hmm. they are going to be having some great groups in the near future, and I'm going to be interviewing Gene Watson, Billy Joe Royal, and uh, hopefully Miss Brenda Lee. And uh, looking forward to meeting some folks up there. If you haven't made plans to go to Hiawassee, now's the time to do it. Um, plan the trip. If you have an RV, call and make reservations to be there. They have so much there this year, it will take hours to get to see it all. Have you actually walked the fairgrounds while y'all are there singing? Yeah, okay. Sure it is have. it is a great opportunity for family fun yeah, enjoy at it. a bargain, bargain price because the price of your tickets also includes the concerts. So yeah, it's going to be awesome. It's a lot of fun. It is awesome. And I will tell you, I'm going to get my earpiece fixed today because everything's been real quiet this week. <laughs> I can't hear anything. I'm going to go get me one like Rich Scott's one that got one of them cool ones that's molded to his ear. Do you think it would mold to my ear? I don't know. I'm going to try that. <laughs> yeah, well, they told us we got about two minutes, so that's We good. do. Well, that's yeah. good. I wish I could hear today. I haven't heard one single thing. And David White, Sugar, it's coming to the Blue Ridge office. There it is. Do you want to write to David on that to personalize it? I'll be glad to. Can you do yeah. that? Because he did win that. And today, I don't know if we had a winner on the Village of Royal Contest or not. Since yeah. I haven't been able to hear anything today, I don't know if we did or not. I know I we had know. a winner with this one. I haven't But heard I'm not it, sure about so. Billy Joe Royal, so if, if not, we'll do that again tomorrow. Get online and check out some of the older stars that are going to be at Hiawassee at the fair. There's some cool entertainers going to be there. Hilda's doing a great job bringing in some folks. And y'all know in the couple, next couple of weeks, we will be with Miss Loretta Lynn on the front row at Hurricane Mills. It's not too late to get tickets to that show. And we will, we'll give you a map and show you how to get there. But it's a great three and a half hour drive from here. It also is a day trip. Yeah. So find something to do. Budget, you know, you can do it. I still want to see the uh, Ten Commandments on the... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You told uh, me about feel, that. Yeah, Field of the Woods. It yeah. is It is amazing. It is very depressing right now because not many people are visiting there, and that's very sad to yeah, me. It's very it sad. Yeah. But so. check it out. It's up just north of Turtle Town, Tennessee. Very easy to find. Go and uh, from the top of the mountain and looking down at the Ten Commandments is an absolutely amazing thing. Yeah, so. It really is. And it's that time of the day again. It uh, is. Uh, time to say time. something we never yeah, say. we don't say goodbye. We never say goodbye. We only say we will see you later. From North Georgia Now Today, I'm Sherry Martin. I'm Matt Diver. We'll see you tomorrow here right here on North Georgia Now Today on ETC3. That's right. Only on ETC3, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 10 a.m., 6 to 7.30 p.m., and 1 to 2.30 for you late nighters. You be here and we'll be here too. I'm having daydreams about
Well, I'm 